Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, sometimes known as Tubal Cane, and I'm standing next to my South Bend 10 inch heavy lathe. And I have never done a video on how to turn a taper using the telescoping taper attachment, so that is the purpose of this video. There are three methods of turning a taper, as you well know number one, the compound rest method, number two, the offset tailstock method, and number three, the taper attachment method and we're dealing with number three. These pictures are from the South Bend lathe book How to Run a Lathe. There are two kinds of taper attachments on South Bend lathes. A plain taper attachment as you see here and the preferred and more complicated attachment is called the telescopic taper attachment and that is what I will be using today. I'm not going to explain the difference between the two because I have a video on that. Tips 561, the plane versus the telescopic taper attachment. So watch that if you want to know the difference. When you make a project or read your blueprint, you're going to find that tapers are specified in two different ways. Number one, by the angle in degrees, or number two, as an amount, inches per foot. And read the caution right there, too. I realize I'm giving you a lot of related information and you want to get on with the project here so I'll let you read this by yourself I'm not going to read it you can pause your video to read it if you are interested in the pros and cons of the taper attachment method alright this is the telescoping taper attachment it is always sold as an option at extra cost and it is a considerable cost considering it's an accessory that is not really used all that often so generally there might only be one or two machines in a machine shop that are thusly equipped now when we look at it from the back side as I told you tapers can read in degrees or inches per foot and on this end the setting can be made in degrees and that goes up to I guess we need a little more light there to 16 degrees in either direction and on the other end it reads again in inches per foot taper in inches per foot we're gonna concentrate on the degree end it's easier to understand Actually, a taper attachment is nothing more than a tracing attachment. So you're tracing the angle that this bar is set at. So I have loosened those two screws, and you can see that I can get on the back side and read the degrees. Now, I'm going to leave it here at a very steep angle, so that I, and that's exaggerated, so I can show you what it's doing, and you can understand it. So I'll just tighten one of these now. I'm not going to run the machine. This is just a trial run. So as I turn the carriage hand wheel, watch the shoe back here that will follow the angle. Now I'm going to put a dial indicator in place that will help you understand that. Watch the movement here as I do it again. Watch the cross feed move in toward me, the operator, as I crank the hand wheel. I want you to understand what I'm doing here. I'm turning the carriage hand wheel and the cutting tool is moving and I'll move it in now on the indicator so you can see it. Alright, I'm moving the carriage hand wheel and you can see the indicator feeding. Right now it's feeding out. The taper attachment doesn't get used every day, so make sure you clean it, get all the chips out of it, and oil the dovetail on the swivel bar. And uh, down in here, there is an oiler, so make sure you oil that. As I turn my taper, I want the small end of the taper to be toward the tailstock, so I will swivel it this way. Okay, this is the second day of filming and it is possible I will repeat myself I don't mean to okay I want to cut a 10 degree taper 
of indeterminate length on a piece of one and one sixteenth inch stock because this isn't a project, it's strictly an exercise. So I'm going to start out by setting uh, the swivel bar for 10 degrees. And with my eyesight, I got to get in close. And then I will lock it here and here. Let me zoom in on this. Remember that this is the degree end that I'm reading. The other end is taper in inches per foot. Now I'm zoomed in a little bit so you can see that I am on the 10 degree mark. Remember the other end of the swivel bar reads in taper inches per foot. Notice now that as I move the carriage the entire unit taper attachment is moving. We do not want that. So I'm going to bring this tool close to the work. I like to work toward the center of the taper attachment. And now I will tighten the binding screw. This is the clamp that fixes the uh, taper attachment uh, to the bed. And now watch it will not move. But the movement is here on the tapered bar. So this is one and one sixteenth stock and again it'll be kind of a short steep taper. I do not need a tail sock but you could use one. In this case it would be in the way at least of filming this. And this stock is heavy enough where it's not going to flex and I'm using a carbide which isn't really that good on this lathe because it's relatively slow speed with an Alors type quick change tool holder and I am almost ready to cut. With a telescoping taper attachment you can do your depth of cut feeding either with the uh, cross feed or the compound. Of course right now the compound set at an angle so it, it wouldn't uh, work at that angle. but. Uh, if you want to use this, you will have to clamp and unclamp the binding screw, or I should say unclamp it, make your adjustment, and then reclamp it. So I'll do that method first. I don't want to confuse you. And another advantage of this uh, taper attachment is we can use the power feed using the clutch on the South Bend lathe. You cannot use the power feed by using the compound rest method that's strictly hand fed. As I get ready to uh, make my first cut let me tell you something. Before each cut make sure you back the carriage out considerably and then back in. That removes any backlash from the entire mechanism or lost motion. Now I'm going to take a, a light cut so I will feed in so just for a trial cut so that I'm at least making a scratch cut and I will tighten the binding screw and finally after 10 minutes of talk I can turn the machine on and take my first cut. And you see it will not cut very long before the taper runs out. So then I will immediately loosen the clutch, back up, come in, loosen, feed, tighten, and turn the clutch for my second pass. Be sure and wear your safety glasses in the shop. Now watch my hands. Turn the machine on. Loosen the binding screw, feed it in a little bit. Tighten the binding screw. Now I will show you the other method, so I'm going to loosen up the compound and set it for zero so it's perfectly perpendicular to the work 
and then tighten it. Now for this next pass, I have tightened the binding screw for the rest of the operation here and back this up and I'll do my feeding with the compound. Not this because that's basically locked right now. Now watch the taper attachment as I take a pass. See if you can see the movement there that I would like you to see. I'm not sure you will. And of course we're essentially tracing the angle of the dovetail swivel bar. As I rotate the chuck by hand, you can see it's a little ragged out here, and that's because this chuck is very, very far off. Perhaps uh, eight thousandths. And that doesn't matter one bit for this exercise, but you can see the taper forming here, and you can make that as short or as long as you want. Another nice thing about the taper attachment, if there were other operations to be performed besides the taper, for instance if we wanted to turn a straight part right here or thread it or whatever, that can be done without taking the work out of the lathe. You just disengage the taper attachment. Getting back to making this setting real quickly, you might find that some machines require you to set it for half of the angle. In other words, a 10 degree taper might be set at 5 degrees here. On some machines, I'm not real sure about that, but mine is 10 degrees included angle and I set it for 10 degrees on the bar. This is not all that accurate, but using a protractor and pushing that up against the squared faced end, I'll bring it down until I got a reading. And now this should read 5 degrees, not 10, because that's just one half, one side of, of the included angle. If you were cutting a very accurate taper, such as a Morse taper, you would have to take some trial cuts and then measure and readjust, and you might have to do that several times. And it would not be a particularly easy operation to do if you wanted a taper that was that accurate, a self-holding Morse or Jarno or Brown and Sharp taper. Okay, there it is. Again, this is just an exercise. Hope this helped you understand how to use the telescoping taper attachment on a south bend lathe. There will be some minor differences between a plain taper attachment, but the principle is generally the same. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is Mr. Pete. So long for now. If you have a South Bend lathe, make sure you get a copy of this. It's available in reprints as well, and I think some free copies someplace on the internet. But it's the Bible for the South Bend lathe. By the way, I do have a 40 chapter series entitled How to Run a South Bend Lathe. You can see that in some of my promos.